Hi, I'm Sam. I'm homeschooled, been interested in computers for a while, and found Perl, first language I learned. Know a little of little Python, some C, but never had any reason not to use Perl. So, and of course, when I need to do something with the GUI, I use TK. I've worked with other things and or try. I'll cover what Perl TK is, why you should use it, and why you ought to use it, and how do you use it. Uh, Perl TK, it's Perl lang the Perl language and borrowing from TCL, the TK widget set. Uh, and of course there are alternatives, but they're not pleasant to work with. GTK, GDK+, QT, TKX, and even a raw X11 interface. And I think there might be a Win form, Windows Forms uh, interface if you have to be using Windows. Uh, but uh, GTK and GTK Plus are uh, annoying in that you have to control every single little thing, whereas Perl TK allows you just to design it and get over with it. Uh, and then QT, I've never worked with the Perl QT interface. And TKX, it uses the TK style interface, but it uses native widgets. So if you're on Linux, it'll use GTK widgets. If you're on Windows, it'll use uh, WinForms widgets. If you're on Mac, I guess it'll use Aqua or something. Uh, and then, of course, the raw X11 interface, if you ever need to do something with plain old X11. But who has to do that anymore? Uh, was WX Windows cool at one time? <laughs> there is. I forgot to mention that, but yes, there is WX Windows, and I hear I've never used it. Uh, if you have you heard of the Padre Perl IDE? Yeah. Okay, that uses WX widgets. Uh, yeah. Sadly, uh, I've never had a reason to use WX widgets. I've looked at it. I haven't uh, seen a reason for me to use that instead of TK mainly because TK is easy enough and I know it well. Um, yeah, why use Perl TK? It's simple, it's powerful, and it's extendable. If you can work with object-oriented Perl, you can pretty much work with Perl TK. Uh, aside from a little, a uh, few slightly odd incantations, it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, if you, uh, uh, I've looked at the Perl GTK2 documentation, and you have to say, okay, anytime there's a click in this area, then do this. Whereas with Perl, you just tell it, you just set bind, and that's easy enough to do. And if you're constructing a button, you don't even have to use the bind command. You just tell it, Okay, here's the callback to use. Uh, and of course, the callback's written in plain Perl. So, obviously, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, it's powerful because it's simple. In fewer lines than in, say, Perl GTK, you can create a pretty uh, complex window, um, and it's extensible. Inherit a couple classes, write a few extra callbacks or a few uh, routines, and you're packaged it up uh, according to the CPAN standards, and you're uploaded to CPAN and you're done. Uh, how do you use it? Well, not like I said, it's not too hard. Uh, let's, Pull up one of those. One of my little examples that I had listed.
Okay, now this was as soon as it pulls up and I move it over to the right screen. This right here was going to be a uh, uh, this was originally I volunteer at a museum and I can't stand that they choose to use proprietary software to manage everything. So, of course, me being me, I wanted to design something to be open source. And I never did get around to doing much of it. But, of course, uh, I was able to create just this basic window using, I think, maybe 30 lines. Uh, you know, I've got a file menu, edit menu, menu for management, and even a help menu. Um, and, oh, where's my mouse? Now, of course, it being Perl, I was able to create it rather quickly, uh, making sure to use TK, use a couple of uh, handy little um, add-ons, the Perl TK hypertext, which allows you to insert HTML into a, uh, like an HTML text area, insert just general formatting italics, bold, headlines, uh, and such, and it'll render it as, H as HTML. It does support links, but I've never worked with that. Uh, lab entry allows you to have labeled entries instead of having to create a label and then an entry right next to it using a lot of frames and weird stuff. And then the dialog box uh, provides a dialog box, and that was, that was a module I was working on writing to allow it to work with the data and get the data from a remote-ish source. And then, of course, YAML for the configuration file. Uh, first thing to create it is, other than using the modules, create the main window. Main window is the main window that you see. First thing that pops up. Create, create it using standard object-oriented Perl uh, um, constructor and give it the option of title as I don't know how many other options. Give it that title option and here have a title. That's the title right there. Uh, of course because this would probably end up being run on Windows machines tear-offs confuse Windows users. So, I disabled tear-offs. Uh, and then I create menu items. Having a, what's called a cascade, the, right here, when you click that, that's the cascade. And then saying, okay, I want these two buttons, giving it a name, and you'll notice that tilde in there. That'll symbol, that uh, is, you put that before the uh, letter that you want underlined. So if I were to say hit Alt F, it'll know that right there where that underline is. And when I hit Alt and F, that's what I want to uh, pop up. And then of course I could do C, but I don't think I have that implemented. Uh, and then, of course, I can create a, another button, a cascade, and a cascade. Uh, it nests, thankfully. And then, of course, you know, if I want to put a separator, I can stick separator in right there. And all that is is a string separator. Uh, and then you have the menu, and that up here constructed the basically an array of arrays which contain the menu. Uh, 
So create that menu and then set the uh, menu bar to menu. Um, now let's see, where do I have something actually doing something if I remember right? Help. Now if I were to, I constructed this help here using a list box, which would be, you know, what are they, what's the tag in HTML? But a list of options. Uh, vertical list of options and I have it bound so that if I were to click an item over here it would pull an item a uh, it would get that name pull an item out of the out of a hash and then which would be an HTML and render it right in here uh, of course it's got that system documentation it uses roughly the same uh, thing, but that would be other, for doc, other documentation, I think, if I remember right. And then, of course, about, which I'm not going to go into, management, you know, create a, oh, I thought I, I formed, thought I had that pull up a form, maybe not. Oh, well. Uh, editing, so you could edit, add, or manage, remove items, add, manage, or remove multimedia, like images, uh, digitized images, uh, and then manage members. Designs, I was planning on having some way for it to have plugins so you could run and manage those, and along with a system for server settings. Uh, oh. And considering, just for readability, the code to construct the menu is, okay, what is that? 50, 62 to from 12 to 62 and that's just for readability I could condense that down if I really wanted to um, and of course I have This one, another project that I never did actually finish. Uh, but this was set up to have a uh, server which you would send queries to, which would in turn query multiple uh, sources, say DuckDuckGo and that kind of thing. Yes, thank you very much. I did not want that. Uh, again, a file menu, ways to save different results, uh, settings for the server and all that, and help. Uh, now this is, most of the interface is implemented using frames other than the menu bar which technically is a frame but I don't have to worry about that so it's got this frame for searching and it'll pop up this which officially will when I end up finishing it if I ever do will allow you to set the sources which you want to search um, and then it has this little entry box uh, which is set to a variable uh, and it will set okay I want so when you type anything in there if I were to open up the debugger which I'm not going to uh, I could pull up and see what was in there as I typed it each each time I uh, had a keystroke in there it would change it and then of course another button to search and little note frame where in the end, more stuff, hopefully, <laughs> will go. It has a debugger. What, Perl? Perl TK. Does. Oh, you mean the Perl debugger? Yeah. Like Perl dash Yeah. Okay. Well, I wasn't, I'm not familiar with the Perl TK debugger. Oh, I didn't know there was. I thought that's what you Oh, no. Okay, oh, there actually is a front end to the Perl debugger written in Perl TK. Oh, okay. 
though, yes. So if you ever have to debug stuff, there is a nice GUI to do that with. Uh, it's a little odd, but it's there. Let's see if we can pull that up, if I can remember the right command. Okay, so here would be the Perl TK debugger. So, you know, you can if I remember correctly, you can click a line and right-click it, maybe set something. I don't remember. Uh, I don't use it all that often. But it is there. Uh, you can... Uh, you can set a breakpoint. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, but actually, that's in the uh, YAML code now. I think I clicked something. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty easy to use. Oh, thank you very much. So let's see, I want to set a breakpoint for line 41. Okay. So now I'm going to run, and it'll run until I get my to my breakpoint, you know, and then I can run again. It'll pop it up, and for some reason it didn't pull everything up. Oh well, but I don't like I said I don't use the Perl TK debugger. I normally use normal Perl dash D, but it still works. Uh, and then let's see what else. There was one more, and this one actually does work if I can convince it to work. And it will load a YAML file. Okay, I didn't really put too much in it, but I think, yeah, I didn't put too much in. But we'll go ahead and now. This here is a bit, in ways, more complex because I'm using a, a uh, tree widget, which is a um, modification of the list H list widget, which is a modification of the list box widget. Uh, but it'll okay, so I'll load it, uh, and of course I used a different extension. So I'll open that up. And it doesn't open for me. Now let's see if we can convince it to open. Why it didn't, I don't know. OK, well, it's not going to open. But what normally would happen is there would be there would appear a tree which has uh, nodes and you know little plus minus closey things. So you can open it up. Oh, here's another item, sub-element. This has a subtree with more sub-elements and such. And that's all that can all be defined in a text file. I, personally, have it set up using uh, YAML, just because I really like YAML. But, uh, and it has, uh, uses TK tree module. TK hypertext and text markdown. So, if anyone else here is familiar with markdown, uh, really easy to use uh, markup. Right here, I actually wrote my original, the uh, original part of my presentation in markdown, and then uh, using. Uh, a tool called Pandot converted it to the S5 format. 
uh, but it works extremely well. Uh, of course, you know, I had to create the main window, add that tear off option because, well, most people don't like tear offs. I don't mind them, but uh, a lot of people don't. Uh, create the menus, which in this case are simple. Uh, set that to be the menu bar. And then, of course, I created the browse tree. The tree which contains everything. Now, you would think that it's easy enough to convince to work, but it's not at times. Uh, and then you have to tell it, okay, you're going to give it a list of items. Now, those items have separators to denote, okay, here's the root, here's the element, or subtree. So you use those separators to do that. So you have to say, okay, so then you'll tell it you want to load. You, using the get open file, uh, function of the main window or any window technically it will pop up a open file dialog allow you to double click a file and you'll get that file now of course since it was in YAML I just did load file dollar sign file which was holding the file name uh, then ran it through parse to actually even though it doesn't technically or anything, it uh, walks through the data structure. So it deletes everything in the uh, tree right here uh, to get rid of it, so there's nothing there. And then, for each node, so every node in data nodes, uh, in the array of data nodes, it will take the name, split it on the slash, get the first one from the end. It will then say name is node if name equals nothing. Otherwise, name of course stays name. Uh, and then it'll add the node to the browse tree. And then it'll run the item create method, which will say, okay, here's the node. This is the node text. Zero. I'm not exactly sure what that does. It'll give the text of the name, and then item type is text. And then at the end of that loop, it will auto automatically set the mode. So it will, if I remember correctly, it will do a few things. I'm not exactly sure what it does because I haven't looked at this code for a while, but it will auto automatically set the mode. I think if you want to. Uh, first, uh, if you want single or multiple uh, selection. Um, I think that's all I have about using it. Yeah, I think, yeah, that is. And of course, warning. There is, of course, a development version for it. Please use the CPAN installation. Uh, CPAN, Perl -m CPAN -e install tk or shell install tk if you really want to. Don't use the development version. I've heard, well, I've heard you can have problems with it. Uh, wait until you get stable. And don't use active state Perl. It's a pain to manage. Uh, packages. It doesn't come with CPAN by default. And getting Perl TK on active state is not pleasant. It'll official it'll originally only allow you to install TKX. Use strawberry. I'm saying this from experience. I have tried active state Perl. It is not pleasant. And Larry Walls endorsed Strawberry saying when he's on Windows he uses Strawberry Perl. So you know, that's something. I've seen the V 
BWIM girl? No. It's uh, I, I just found it. It's it's a uh, it's a packaging of strawberry pearl plus like basically all the stuff that you want by default. Hmm. Uh, like Padre and um, let's see, uh, a bunch of uh, various drivers. Hmm. I, just because I don't want to have extra stuff, I tend to install it as I need it. Uh, also, when I am on Windows, sadly. Uh, have you heard of Chocolatey? Of what? Chocolatey. Chocolatey, no. It is the new Windows Package Manager. Really? Yeah, it, it's not official, it, but uh, someone wrote it because they wanted to do something to make it easy to install open source apps. Uh, but one of the neat things about it is it's chocolate, it's C inst space strawberry pearl I think and then you hit enter and it'll install strawberry pearl automatically. You can also do that with Emacs if you're an Emacs person. So, and of course I am, uh, <laughs> so I would. But also use TK rather than TKX. TKX uses the best looking widget set, which honestly can be buggy. The Perl GTK2 uh, modules do have issues. Uh, they have quite a few more dependencies than Perl TK, which can be annoying. And a lot of people on Perl Mux know TK better than TKX. Uh, I think I've seen maybe 10 posts about TKX on there and I do get on Perlmonks a lot. And of course, questions. Have any? Sure. I, I wanted to look at some of the, the event stuff that was driven, like is your code on GitHub or something? Uh, some of it. The, I was just looking for a subroutine, which it looked like you were using a singleton for the... Which one? For accessing the menus. Oh, you don't actually have to do any of that. You, because of how it is, what you do is you can ba you basically define a data structure, an array of arrays, well, a reference to an array of arrays, and you take that reference, give it to the main window, uh, give it to the menu constructor, and that'll produce a menu, and then you set that menu as the menu for the window. So like when you're doing a search form, you oh. just hit the search button. Oh, the search form. Well, what happens is the form field, okay, in Perl TK, it's right in here. So you have the button, okay, and that'll run a command, okay, and that's just to set the sources you want to use, which it'll get a list from the server if I ever end up writing that. Uh, and then you have the entry, okay. Now the entry, one of the options to entry is text variable, okay. You hand that a reference to a variable and it'll stick that, whatever you type in there, or whatever is set in uh, set in that variable. If you have something preset, it'll be there. It'll be in the entry. You change it, it's in that variable, okay? So then search right here, when you press that, it would take a look at what's in that variable. It's just a variable. Basically. It doesn't have to be, but in this case, because it's the main window, it kind of makes sense that it's global. Now, if you had a uh, what's known as a top-level window, which wouldn't be a main window, you can only have one of those. You can have multiple top-level windows. I don't know why they call it that, but that's a window that uh, that'll pop up. It will. You can have because it's created a lot of times by a subroutine. You can have uh, lexically scoped lexically scoped variables. And it's Perl TK, and this is on GitHub. Let's see if it's on my GitHub. I don't remember, or if it was on my old account. Um, what would that be? That would be Power Search, right there. So SW Flint slash Power Search. There's much in it, I'd be surprised. I don't 
think I've developed that much, or for that matter, the Z chip idea, which was a, the idea was a, well, there's a bit in here. Oh, maybe I should know how to read me. Oh well, the uh, Z chip idea was just kind of a spur of the moment thing to see if I could write a quick and dirty assembly only virtual machine type thing in Perl. And I've defined the architecture and that's about it. I haven't gotten much into implementation. Cool. Anything else? Right, thanks, Sam. Oh.